Hey, it's Spence from launchflows.com. In this video, I'd like to show you the basic automation follow-ups after somebody purchases a product. Now, this is relevant because when you're setting up your sales funnels with launch flows, there are things that you can do before a person has registered, logged in, and presumably purchased something with WooCommerce, but there's even more powerful things you can do afterwards. And that's what we call tag-based automation. In order to accomplish this, you need at least a basic CRM, and you'll need either the CRM's capability to follow up, or you'll need a helper plugin like WP Fusion. I'm going to show you both here. A really powerful combination that is all WordPress plugin based would be using Fluent CRM along with WP Fusion. In some cases, you might want to use an outside service like an active campaign. You might have heard of other very popular ones as well. There's maybe 50 or more CRMs on the market. But as a basic starting point, Fluent CRM is terrific because it's available as a free plugin to start. You can also buy the pro version and it allows you to have a 100% owned and controlled setup. For many businesses, that's a great choice. If you have more advanced needs, you can check out other SMTP services, other uh, CRM services, other outside things. But as a basic starting point, you're hosting SMTP, uh, Fluent CRM, WP Fusion, Launch Flows and WooCommerce is a really simple stack. Okay, let's show you the example here and then I'll go through it and set it up live so you can see it in action. We're gonna show you how to sell a product and then in the process of the checkout, when somebody actually buys it and checks out versus just having it in the cart, we're going to apply a tag. In this case, we'll sell a slice of pizza. We'll give them a tag called purchase pizza. In, along the way, they'll be taken to the thank you page where the registration and logging in process will allow us to make a thank you page that will show the person's name as a personalized touch along with the launch flows uh, dynamic capability of showing what they just bought. But the tag of pizza is going to be used to trigger an email sequence as well as to possibly show some different things on the website. Because somebody has a tag when they are registered and logged in, we can use that tag for access control as well as to change the environment. The idea is that the tag is both applied to the user and to the user's contact profile, allowing us to both modify the WordPress environment as well as to do automated follow-ups. I'll show you that in action. So let's get basically started here. I'm not gonna make this like a step-by-step, -step, but I'm gonna just brush over the big picture stuff. We've got Fluent CRM installed and WP Fusion installed, Launch Flows installed. I mentioned an SMTP service. Here you could use a third-party service and use the Fluent SMTP plugin, but I'm just right now using the default SMTP service of my Cloudway hosting. That'll work for this purpose too. If you do high volume email, you obviously want to add a third party service. And that's for the email sequences and other things to be sent out in a reliable way. What we want to have is tags, at least one tag. So what I've done here is I only have one contact, but in Fluent, I've set up at least one tag and I've called it purchased pizza. There's a really unlimited number of tags that you can have and use, but in today's example, we just need one because this is going to be Here's my show and tell, the thing we use to document that this user has purchased the pizza and in their contact profile, trigger an automated sequence of emails. For the product, I've created several products that you've seen in my other videos. I'm going to go to the slice of pizza product. And in this case, although I could do the same capability with Fluent CRM, I'm gonna use WP Fusion in the product data tab to apply a tag called purchased pizza. This will allow me to know that somebody actually has paid for that particular product so I can trigger or otherwise change their journey in a different way. With launch flows, I've set it up so that this product is going to go to the standard checkout page and then there's going to be a thank you page that I will send somebody to afterwards. Let's talk about those. I can customize the checkout page in any number of ways, as you've seen in my other videos, including adding dynamic order bumps and so forth. But I'm gonna show you similarly now with the thank you page, how I can add a thank you that is customized to this user 
depending on which product they bought or depending on just the fact that they've completed the checkout. Let's drop over there for a second. The thank you page has any design components you want into it. In this case, I just built it with Gutenberg. But what I want to show you is that we can add the custom thank you block or shortcode. This launch flows component can be added simply by going into Gutenberg and typing either thank you or launch flows and placing the block in there. It doesn't require any parameters. It just requires you to have it in place because it will stylistically give you the components of here's what you just bought. You'll notice that I combined it with a couple of other components. First of all, I added using cadence a dynamic heading. Now you don't have to make this dynamic, but this is a neat part about how we do things at launch flows as well as in my consulting business at WP Launchify. By using this component, we are able to not only just say thanks, but we can actually use the dynamic capability to put in the person's name. And this is an option that's available through Cadence Blocks Pro and several other Gutenberg block uh, plugins. I expect that this will be a default feature uh, of almost everything in the near future. Uh, we also have added a button here, and the button allows us to send somebody to the My Account area of WooCommerce to specifically the My Orders. That means that if they've come to the thank you page and they see what they bought, but they want to review what they've previously bought, it just is a convenient way to take them on. So, in review, the thank you page has the dynamic content of showing with launch flows what they just got, with the Cadence Blocks dynamic heading, it shows the name of the person who just bought. And likewise, we have the option to send them to different places. Now, I could also, if I wanted, throw in some more dynamic uh, control by using the other things like conditional blocks to display various buttons, various links, various headings, various whatever. I'm not going to do that in this video, but I think you can imagine uh, how advanced or easy it could be to change based upon what they have done or what they have bought, just using things like the visibility conditions. All right, now let's talk about the email sequences. The difference between a one-off email and an email sequence is that with Fluent CRM, we have the capability of essentially sending somebody on a trip. Think of it like putting them on a cruise ship. An email sequence is a predefined series of emails that once you put somebody on them, they will continue to receive that sequence unless or until something else stops it. That's different than a dynamic automation where the emails they get are constantly adjusted based upon other factors happening. So an email sequence is really terrific when you have a new customer who you want to condition or train or accommodate to what you have to sell. Just don't abuse it. In today's world, long emails to educate people are not really favorable compared to short emails that take them to a place on your website. So what we've got here is email sequences. And to create a new sequence, it's very simple. First of all, you're gonna to need to name it. New pizza, let me spell properly. New pizza, my goodness, sorry. There we go, new pizza buyers. You can call it whatever you want. Now we can add any number of emails. I'm not gonna fill out all the emails, but I do wanna give you some tips. First of all, you can make as many emails as you want in the sequence. Let's just call them what they are, email number one. A tip for many people that if you've never used the Gutenberg Writer Affluent is as follows. I have found that by typing a paragraph, hitting enter, and then typing the word spacer, and then making that space for roughly 30 pixels, you are gonna get an outstanding format result versus trying to use <laughs> the default paragraph settings of WordPress. This is a tip from lots of trial and error, so just do this format. Put in your content and then put a 30 pixel spacer between everything, even when it comes to something like an image. Because if you do it this way, you will get a consistent result across almost all of the email clients. And again, I have done this hundreds of times now and found that I cannot get a good result unless I simply do content space, content space, content space. When you've created your particular email, you can go ahead and either specify a sending time range and or you can delay it. So for example, the first email, if I don't want to send out for a day, I just say, don't send it until a day after 
the sequence has started. And then you can carry on with all the other details of filling this out. Now, once you're done with this, you can send yourself a test email to make sure it looks and feels right. And you can also save it and get on with the next in the sequence. In this particular case, I'm going to go back to my sequence and I'm going to add maybe a second one just to demonstrate email to, and I'm going to say, I'm going to wait two days from the start of the sequence. Remember, this is two days from me putting them on the cruise ship to see these emails, not two days from the last email. And I just carry on with the same other details. So now I've got basically two emails in a sequence. Now what do I do to start the sequence? Well, we need what's called an automation. So we go to automations and we create a new one. And for this, what we're going to do is use the trigger of a tag being applied. The tag will only be applied. Let's give it a name so it's not going to an error. Let's do automation to trigger pizza. Having a trouble with my Z's today. Pizza email sequence. You don't have to be so literal, but I think it's useful. If we go ahead and name that with tag applied, we can then say the thing that will trigger this is when a tag is applied called purchase pizza. And remember, this tag only gets applied when they complete the purchase. That's when WP Fusion will apply it. So we know anybody who gets these emails will definitely have already purchased the piece of pizza product. There's an option here to restart this multiple times. In this case, it wouldn't be appropriate because we really only want to send an introductory sequence of emails to a new buyer one time. Otherwise, it'd be kind of silly. And here we choose for the next action after the automation has been triggered, an email sequence. So we go ahead and say, set sequence emails. And we choose from the list, our new pizza buyer sequence. It's really that simple. Now again, we have the option to restart the sequence if they're already in there. That doesn't make a lot of sense. You know, if somebody's already seen the sequence and they get the pizza tag again for some reason, or they maybe, you know, had done something to remove their subscription and add it again, we don't really need to give them the same email. So I'm going to say no to that. And that's all there is. We can put an ending on here. It's not necessary, but for example, if we wanted to know whether somebody bought something else, if we wanted to know that they got another tag, if we wanted to check whether they had other things, we can put all kinds of conditionals on after that, or we can just leave it alone and call it a day. There's nothing about this that requires us to close it out. Although there is something that would be essentially, I'm done with this, end the funnel. So sometimes I put this in just to let me know when I look at the automation that there's really nothing else to be expected here. Okay, that's it. When you're done, you can go ahead and change this from a status of draft to a status of published. This means that when somebody buys and they get the tag, they're going to get the series of emails in the sequence. Now let's talk about how this would look when they're triggered. And we'll also talk about what the experience is like. So let's go to the front of our site. And we'll go into the shop. Here, we'll buy the piece of pizza by adding it to the cart. And then we'll go ahead and we'll look at the actual checkout. In this case, with launch flows, the piece of pizza is being sent directly to the cart. Let's clear this out, by the way, because we want to get rid of the piece of pizza. You'll notice I've still got my upsell offer from another setup that I'd done. But if we buy this piece of pizza, we'll get the tag. In this particular case, let's go ahead and imagine that the person bought the piece of pizza. If they did, they will be given the tag of pizza purchased and it will show up inside of their profile as well as uh, in their Fluency CRM contact profile as well as in their user profile. So to save time, let me just show you what that looks like on the back end. If we go into Fluent CRM, the contact for the buyer, and I'm just going to use my profile here, is going to end up having a tag of purchase pizza. This tag will allow you to create what's called a new segment. In other words, if I want to do more beyond the automation I just set up, I can also search for any contacts who have a particular tag of purchase pizza. That will allow me to make new lists or new segments or new automations. Likewise, the user in WordPress will also get the tag shown. So if you're using WP Fusion, that user will have that tag. That's useful because now we can show or hide 
different content. Let me give you an example. Besides the thing that I already talked about on the thank you page, maybe I want to make um, a block of content show up or a different particular page be hidden based upon the fact that they have a tag. And here's a basic idea. Let's say I have a special page that's only available for pizza buyers. We'll call it the pizza buyer club page. Now this could apply to buddy boss groups or forums, or it could be in lessons or courses. But as a basic thing, when I go to this page, I'll have an option with WP Fusion where I can show this only to people in the event that they have the tag. And therefore, this entire page will be protected only for those people who have the tag, i.e. the pizza buyers. For people who do not, I can either show a custom message or I can redirect them or I can show them alternative content. Altogether, this system gives you a really, really powerful way just by selling one tag and using the tools of launch flows along with your favorite design components of having not only a sales funnel, but also a user journey experience funnel that lets you modify the things that people see and get based upon their choices through a WooCommerce checkout. And in doing so, you can keep what's effectively a dossier, a, a record of everything that somebody has been interested in in the past so that you can customize their journey, make them happier to be in a relationship with you, and sell them more stuff. If you have subscription products, it means they'll stay longer and churn out less. These kinds of things are what we do over at WPLaunchify.com. So if you're a fan of launch flows or you're using the plugins that I mentioned and you're curious about how to use these more effectively, come over and use our free discovery tool and or click through to get a free call with me. I have a free 15 minute offer where I will talk to anybody for free about their particular setup and in many cases, I can deliver you an answer that is something you've been searching for or hoping for for a long time without the pain and confusion. It costs you nothing, and I have 15 years of expertise with tens of thousands of clients just like you. I look forward to seeing you at LaunchFlows and hopefully at WP Launchify as well. See you in the next video.